Welcome to the chaos. So recently I've been working on my three pound robot, the Hound, and I've been redesigning it and I wanted to know if the wheels I was using were actually the best. And I didn't really have a good way to test that. I was just kind of rubbing wheels on things and feeling what felt the best. So instead of doing that, I designed up this quick little uh, traction dynamometer here. And what it does is it lets us push down on the wheel with a set amount of weight and push it into a load cell over here. And that will give us the amount of force that this wheel is pushing with. Now I designed it so that I can insert either a piece of pine wood or a piece of steel to kind of emulate the two different types of BattleBots floors that I commonly see in the three pound area. This pine is emulating uh, just some standard plywood. Usually the top and bottom layers are smooth pine, which is very similar to this. Uh, I just cut these out of some uh, one by, you know, probably four, three by one half stock. Uh, these guys are just little light switch covers. They're just mild steel, super basic. I figure people are going to spend the best, or spend the money on the best floors for their battle box, battle box no matter what. So I can either insert some steel or insert a piece of pine. So when I hit start, you'll see it starts pushing and it'll eventually start flipping. Each run lasts 10 seconds, and at the end I feel like I should have a breakaway friction, which will be our static friction, and a friction as the wheel is spinning, which is going to be our dynamic friction. And I'll be able to characterize those as the peak at the very beginning, and then just kind of the average as it's spinning. Now, the downward force isn't super accurate, but I made sure that's fairly consistent uh, with this scale, which used to fit until I put this load cell in. Uh, hang on. Alright, where were we? As I was saying. So with this scale, I can measure the amount of downforce from each wheel. Uh, I'm trying to keep it around 400 grams. Uh, if I swap out a wheel to a lighter, like foam one here, it'll be 390. I'll add a nut or something to bring it back to around 400. Uh, I'm not going to be super accurate with it because these are all fairly similar. Around 400. Uh, so with that, with the downward force and the lateral force, I should be able to calculate the coefficient of friction. I don't expect it to be super accurate as this machine isn't pushing straight down, there's a little bit of bend, and then as, as it pulls, it'll kind of lift this up and pop away from it. Uh, either way, I think it'll be good enough just to compare. So I don't want you to pull any numbers out of it and be like, this is the coefficient of friction for this wheel. This is just going to be a comparison as to wheel to wheel on this dynamometer. Alright, first up on our list is the cheapest and most simple wheel. This is just a piece of foam that was cut out on a router in the shape of a circle. Uh, super duper simple. Uh, with the floor mats that I used, if you find them on Amazon and cut 216 wheels out of them, which you can fit on there, uh, you'll get a cost of about 22 cents a wheel. So these guys are dirt cheap and super easy. So let's put these guys on here and see how they do. So baseline of 285 grams, uh, pretty good, uh, nothing special here, these are just super basic wheels, so wanted a quick baseline there. Now up next we have the current hound wheels. Now these have latex painted onto the outside, so just to give them a little bit more traction. So these guys, after you add in the latex, come in at a around 38 cents. So let's give these guys a go. Okay, that was significantly better. We got a peak there of 949 grams. And the 
average of the last two seconds was 842. So that did pretty well there. I know I did notice a lot of jumping at the end. This wheel kind of bounces a bit, and that is something I've noticed in Hound, is when it's pushing at something, it just starts jumping violently. And I'm not sure if that's something I want to keep. Uh, we'll see how it does compared to some of the other wheels. So next up, we've got these finger tech wheels, which cost about $2.50. And I gotta swap out this hub here. So these are a little bit more rubbery on the outside than the foam wheels here. These are a lot slicker. So we'll see how that does for traction. All right, uh, peak of around 474 grams and the last two seconds average to about 440 grams. So these are very consistent wheels. You're not gonna see any of that bouncing that you're gonna see with these wheels, but they're not nearly as grippy. Now you could coat these guys in the same latex as this and give yourself the same amount of grip if you don't wanna cut your own wheels. Uh, they are also a lot more durable where uh, these ones will take a good chunk out of it with a horizontal. I actually saw that as a benefit as I used to have these on Hound, and when a horizontal would hit me, it would rip the entire wheel off. Whereas now, it will just rip a chunk out of the wheel, and I'll still be left with, you know, a 90% functional wheel. So, that's not necessarily a bad thing that the wheels fall apart, but if you've got a better robot and you don't want to swap out wheels every match, then uh, I would suggest these. Now, up next, we've got these Vex IQ wheels. Now, I use these guys on my girlfriend's robot, the Potato. Uh, these are from the Build Blitz kit, I want to say. I just have these lying around. So uh, we'll give them a shot. They are $13 each because you have to buy them in a set that's $74 was the cheapest I could find it. So these are not the most accessible wheels, but I figured I'd throw them on there, see how they did. very impressed with how these did. They got a max of 906 grams of force and the last two seconds averaged to 885. Now compared to the Hound wheels, the Hound averaged 842 in the end. So these actually averaged a higher force than the Hound wheels, which is not at all what I expected. I expected this latex would blow the rest out of the competition. So uh, I don't know, I might be looking into using that for the next Hound. Now, up next, we've got the LEGO 56mm wheels. Uh, these, from the websites I found, you can get them for around a dollar, depending on who you're looking at. If you're looking for longer lead times, then you can get them as low as 50 cents, I found. So, eh, very cheap option. And this is just for the rubber, of course. Uh, the hub sold separately, which you'd probably want to 3D print anyway. Now, let's see how these guys do. pretty good, a uh, max of 713, and the average at the end there was 674 grams. So not quite as good as the IQ wheels or the Hound, but still very respectable and a very cheap option. So next I've got this Vex Flex wheel. This is the 30A durometer 2 inch wheel. Uh, I just printed this little hub to hold on to it. Now uh, let's see how, oh, pricing. Uh, that comes in at... That comes in at $4.99. I feel like these are going to be really sticky. So we'll see how those go. I was actually surprised. Uh, these didn't do quite as well as I thought they would. Uh, they got a max of 781, and the average of the last two seconds was 669. Oh, they did jump around quite a bit just like the hound wheels so uh, keep that in mind if you're looking at a robot with like low ground clearance or something so next I've been looking forward to these guys this is a slitting saw so it's just a very fine-toothed high-speed steel saw 
Uh, this is meant to emulate some of the wood magnets that people are using at Norwalk to get really good traction into the wood. So I have high hopes for this one. Alright, let's see how that does. So that did actually very well. Uh, it got a very high peak of 952 grams, uh, but the last two seconds it actually averaged out at only 274 grams. That's right down there with the uncoated foam wheel. So once you break traction with these things, it seems to be you lose everything. So keep that in mind if you're driving. Uh, if you all of a sudden lose grip, maybe slow down and try to regain gain some grip. Uh, surprisingly, it only cut a very small divot in the wood. Uh, I expected a little bit more damage, but I guess that's good. You don't want to destroy the floors of your arenas too much. We'll put that guy aside. Jeez. Now, the last thing I wanted to try was this rubber band. Now, this is what I've been using to hold down the samples here, but it feels really grippy, actually. So I'm just going to throw it on this IQ wheel here just for funsies and uh, see how it does. Okay, that actually did surprisingly well with a max of 737 grams and the last few seconds averaged to 712 grams. Uh, it was pretty consistent the entire time, so I guess if you're uh, struggling and you need a last minute fix, just throw a, throw a latex rubber band on there. Alright, here is that data in the form of a bar chart with calculated coefficients of friction. All right, now that we know all of the contestants and how the test is going to go, let's speed run through this steel. All right, so first up is the foam wheels, which give us uh, about as expected performance. Uh, not much better, 226 max and 216 average over the last few seconds. Hound wheels coming in hot again. Uh, still very, very bouncy and kind of grabby. Uh, they maxed out at 1764 grams and averaged 1245 in the last two seconds. Now up next is a finger tuck, again doing slightly better than the foam, max of 509 and average of 478. Now we have the Vex IQ tires, again doing very well for themselves, max of 1514 and an average of 1279. Very impressive. Now next we have the Lego wheels, uh, they got a max of 11.46 and in the last two seconds averaged 10.53. Alright, Vex Flex wheels, max of 12.13 before breaking away and averaging around 10.18. Uh, still doing pretty well. Uh, next up, the saw tires. Now, I was actually really surprised by this. Uh, they did very well for themselves considering them. They got a max of 817 and the last few seconds averaged 683. Uh, now we have the latex rubber band once again. It got 1469 as the max, and at the end it kind of fell off, but I kind of left it in just because it was fun to watch. It got a last two second average of 1327, so still very good for just throwing a rubber band on a piece of tire. And here is that data again in the form of coefficients of friction for the steel. So, where does all of that testing leave us? Well, I think for the wood, my favorite's going to have to be the slitting saw. The way it just grabbed in and had that huge peak before it broke away, I think that you will never actually get it to break away, because if you're starting to push anyone, their wheel is going to slide first. So you're never actually going to get to that super duper low uh, friction zone on that test. So, winner for wood is going to be the slitting saw. Now for steel, I chose the current hound wheels. They are a little bouncy, so maybe you get would get pushed around because every time you're in the air, you get backed up. Uh, but I think that they did overall the best. They had the highest peaks. So if there's someone you're trying to get underneath or someone you're trying to push around, I think that's going to be your uh, your trick. And of course, you can put that latex on anything. Uh, it doesn't have to be on this specific type of foam. Now I think the winner 
of overall, which really surprised me, was these Vex IQ slick tires. Uh, feeling these, I wouldn't expect that. These feel a lot smoother than maybe some of the other rubbers, especially the flex wheels here. So uh, that was very surprising to me. And uh, yeah, let me know what wheels you want to see tested in the future. I know I've got my friends asking for Bangbots and cast foam tires. So we'll see those soon. So let's talk some statistics here. This isn't the most statistically accurate way to test the wheels. I really did only have a sample size of one for some of my wheels, like this uh, Lego wheel here. I just borrowed this from a friend. So maybe different batches of Legos have different strengths and different stickiness. Uh, this is all I really have to test right now. And uh, you did only see one run in that video, but I actually did three runs for each one off camera. Uh, each time I flipped the wood flint panel or turned it around so it was on a new contact patch. So it's not the uh, worst runs possible. Uh, they were fairly consistent and I tried to take the median run. Uh, now the reason I didn't average all of them together is you would lose some of that like bounciness with the hound tires. I thought that was really important to keep in the data there. So instead of just averaging all of the data into one kind of flat line, I wanted to keep the jaggedness of the data. It really makes it interesting just how these wheels perform rather than just what the numbers are. Uh, the accuracy of the low cell also can be called into question and uh, I did cut the scale on a bandsaw. I don't think I hit any of the wires so it should be fine. But this isn't at all a scientific test, this was just me messing around in the garage and I figured I'd share my findings with you. So uh, if you're still watching at this point, thanks for watching, glad to have you here, and uh, see you next time. One more thing before I go. Uh, one more thing I tested is I actually filled in the holes of this flex wheel here with just a 3D printed part. This one just shoves into the entire profile of the wheel and keeps it round so it can't actually squish in, whereas this one kind of lets it squish and bend. And that actually yielded much better results because uh, this wheel wasn't allowed to bounce up and down as much. It got a much, well, not a much higher, it got a higher average. Uh, I'll run those two side by side here for you, but uh, that actually changes my mind. I might stick to this one for the next version of Hound uh, just because these are easier to get a hold of and you don't have to buy as much to get them. So. Yeah, that's, uh, that's another little thing. I don't feel like going back and editing it back into all of my videos, so eh, here's what you can see. And it's just really interesting how just a, such a small change uh, can make such a huge difference.